question related to determining a concentration of barium hydroxide solution from a, a titration. We're going to do the endpoint a little bit differently in this titration. We're going to use two methods actually to find the concentration of this solution. What we want to do in this experiment is get some idea of what the conductivity of a solution is and relate that to the ions, sort of the concentration of ions you have in solution. We want to use those conductivity types of measurements to find the endpoint in a titration. And we want to use two different methods to be able to find the concentration of barium hydroxide solution. The chemical background looks like this. As our equation is up here, chemical reactions up here, using barium hydroxide as our base, using sulfuric acid as our acid. Uh, you'll notice in this that when you, these two react, the barium hydroxide is a soluble strong electrolyte. The sulfuric acid is a soluble strong electrolyte, so they break into lots of ions in solution. On the other side of the equation, though, the barium sulfate is over here. Barium sulfate is a solid, precipitates to the bottom, does not get lots of ions in solution. Still a strong electrolyte, but not soluble. And my water is a weak electrolyte too, doesn't break up very much in solution. So what will happen is this reaction gets toward this end point where I have the same number of moles of barium hydroxide and sulfuric acid, is I'll end up with very few ions in the solution. So what we're going to do in this is, since these guys react in a one-to-one -one ratio on this side, if you want to think about the hydrogen hydroxides, they react in a two-to-two, -two, which is the same thing as a one-to-one. -one. We'll have a standardized concentration solution of sulfuric acid, who's somebody whose concentration we know. We can titrate these two together. Once we do that, we'll know the volume of sulfuric acid it takes to get to the end point. We can go back then and know how many moles of sulfuric acid, or how many moles of hydrogen ion, if you will. And over here, we'll know how many moles of barium hydroxide must have been in our sample we're looking at. Uh, usually, you've used a, usually, the times you've done titrations, you use a color indicator. An indicator changes color when you get to the end point. This one will be a little bit different in the sense that now, is, again, if I look back to this, I have lots of ions in barium hydroxide, lots of ions in sulfuric acid, not very many in sulf barium sulfate, and not very many in water. So that means when I get to the end point, I don't have very many ions left in. So what we're going to do is measure the conductivity of solution to figure out when that point occurs when we have very, very few ions in solution. So if we look at the conductivity and its relation to the end point, what conductivity amounts to is the flow of the electrical charge between a couple of plates. This is the simplest way to think about that. And if you have ions in solution, it's going to help you transport those electrons. And so, I should say electrons here, so what will happen above is we start out here, we have lots of ions, have lots of conductance because we have lots of ions in solution. When I get to the end point, I have When you look at the simulation, try to see how this works. Hopefully it's not too busy. Up here in the burette, I've got the sulfuric acid. This is what you'll do in your experiment. I have barium hydroxide down here in the beaker. I've shown them as separated ions completely. So I've shown the sulfuric acid as a sulfate ion and two hydrogen ions. I have three sulfuric acid molecules up in here, and I have two barium hydroxide uh, molecules associated down in here. The equation, again, is in the bottom just for refresher. Barium hydroxide will react with sulfuric acid and will form barium sulfate and water. Okay. Now. You'll notice here in the starting point that all these guys are broken up. If I go down in the flask, you know, the beaker, and I count how many ions I've got, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So on the plot, I've made a point where I have six ions when I haven't added any sulfuric acid yet. If I take and I add a slug of sulfuric acid now, and now I've taken and dropped in one sulfuric acid molecule effectively, what happens is it goes through this reaction with barium sulfate. You'll see in the beaker now, I've formed solid barium sulfate right here. Looks like over here. You'll also see that I have left over, I've formed two water molecules, one here, one here, and I also have left over barium ions and hydroxide ions in solution. So my ion count now has dropped to three inside of the beaker because I've formed the solid and the water, so they've taken ions out of solution. And over here, you'll see here, I've made a point of plotting the three ions now after I've made one addition of sulfuric acid. If I go and I add again, and another sulfuric acid molecule. Now what happens is I have as many sulfuric acid molecules as I have barium hydroxide. I form all water and barium sulfate in the flask down here. This is the end point of that titration. Count up the ions down in the beaker. Zero. No ions in the beaker. This is after my second addition. 
if I go from my last addition of sulfuric acid, what happens here is now I've got sulfuric acid extra. I have sulfate ion, I have hydrogen ion and hydrogen ion. They have nothing to do because we'd run out of barium hydroxide. And I have a point that comes up here, three ions in solution. So if you look at this plot, you have points that come down like this. You have a line that comes up like this. Where they intersect is where you're really kind of looking at the point where you had no ions in solution. So we can use that information to figure out where the end point in this titration is without using a color indicator. The setup for the experiment isn't very complicated. You've seen this sort of thing before. Up in the top is your burette that will have your sulfuric acid. This is the vernier conductivity probe sticking into the solution. This is the barium hydroxide solution. I was a little bit impatient, so it's a little cloudy. Yours won't be cloudy uh, when you get it, but it looks like that. And this is the conductivity probe in here. And to look at a close-up of the tip of that, down in here, what you see is there is the tip of the conductivity probe. You want to make sure he's in the solution. So pay attention in the lab. I think in the lab book it said 50 milliliters. The first version says 50 milliliters of water to it. You know, I'm well over 100 here. We don't really care how much water you add. All we care about is that you get over the top of that opening in the conductivity probe where it began. I'm going to hit the time base thing up in the upper right-hand corner. I'm just going to let it run. Hit this up here. You get this screen, and up here you can hit the drop down. It goes to events with entry. Okay. And then you're going to type in the name for whatever this is going to be, volume, whatever it'll be inside of here. It just says event, and just put in the volume, and that's fine. Okay, so it looks like that. You click on your OK down in the corner, down below, tell it you want to average over 10 seconds, tell it OK. You've done that before, and now you're set to go. When you hit the green start arrow at the bottom, lower left hand corner, you're going to get this screen, and that little keep thing is what's going to be important for us when you want to keep approaching the data. When you've added some sulfuric acid, you want to keep that value, you'll t click on the keep button, it'll come back and ask you what you want to keep. The, uh, I, the idea of keeping the points along the way, this one is kind of long, pretty far along, but to show you how this works, when I hit the keep button, here's what will happen. Come and hit the keep button. Get this, he's going to do my averaging over 10 seconds like we requested it do. We just do that because I kind of like doing that. And then here you type in whatever volume corresponds to that particular uh, addition. And so in this case it was 8.4 something, 8.48 milliliters. Type that, hit the OK down below, and now you've got that piece of data in. And so you can do this for several data points along the way. Uh, and then when you get done, you'll have a plot that looks like this. this. You might notice this looks strangely, strangely like the one we had before, okay, where, where we have ion concentration dropping, ion concentration going up. It's a little bit flat here in the bottom. That's most likely because uh, we don't have a very sensitive range down toward this bottom part, so it's not quite picking up those differences down there. But we can pick out where the, uh, where the end point is by looking at this line that comes down along here. Just making a straight line plot along here and determine what the uh, where this volume is going to be down at the bottom. So you can do that. Bob, if you don't recall how to do straight line stuff on here, here's the provision you're taking you drag over the part of the plot you want to take take plot of. If you go to analyze curve fit, and you can click on curve fit, click on conductivity. If you're better aim than I am like that. Tell it what kind of equation you want to fit that to, and it's going to look like a linear. Looks like this. There's your slope intercept, all that kind of good information, and you can use that information to work backwards to find out what that volume is right where it hits the zero line in the plot. Okay. And so that will be your endpoint. That's the volume sulfuric acid required. Now you're going to do this two ways. Once you find that volume, we can use the standardized concentration of sulfuric acid to work back through our acid-base relationships and find out how many moles of barium hydroxide you delivered and therefore its concentration. The other way we'll do it is we'll take and we'll filter out the barium sulfate, we'll dry it out, and we'll see how well that works in class, we'll dry it out, get the mass of barium sulfate, and then you can relate that back to the number of moles of barium ion you had in that solution to start with. And so there's two different ways you'll find that concentration today. And that's, I hope that helps some. Uh, hopefully you'll have a good time in the lab. It's kind of fun watching that plot make. There's no way that plot can go bad.